Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena for yet more DIY fun. This week we have a long list of loose ends to tie up. I'm gonna have to finish the cockpit locker here so we can start storing our scuba tanks in there. I've got an emergency tiller I also wanna store in there. We've got tons of line that's gonna go in there. We've got our emergency water, and just a whole heap of stuff. And once all of that is in there, we also have to install the new drive unit for the autopilot and get that configured. Last week, I made a little bit of an oopsie-daisy and put two unwanted holes in our cockpit combing here. So I'll have to get those filled, fared, and painted, plus some other minor projects. Let's go ahead and get started. My name is Mess, this is my wife, Ava. I've spent the last five years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That was a DIY fun-packed adventure, complete with a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, rebuilding the entire deck, gutting and subsequently rebuilding most of the interior, painting the top sides and a ton of other projects. The summer of 2021, we started cruising full time. Now we're finally ready to begin our adventure. It's gonna be raining on and off this week, which makes doing outside repairs like the holes on the cockpit combing just a tiny bit more annoying, but we should still be able to get it done. Now the holes there are tiny, so I'm in no way concerned about the strength of the cockpit combing or anything like that. My main concern about those holes is to make sure that they're watertight and also that we don't over time get little cracks forming around the edge of the holes. This is a cross section of what the tiny hole looks like. Now I've put a slight bevel on the edges here with a countersink bit. We've got paint primer and then fiberglass. So my goal here is to sand away the paint and the primer and enough of the fiberglass that I can lay up one or two layers of glass here without that protruding over the surface so we have room for a little bit of fairing compound. Before I start laying up glass, I'll apply tape to the back and just fill this void here with a little bit of thickened epoxy. If this was a structural repair, maybe something like a hole from a through hole below the waterline even, then I would do a much more involved process of grinding a bevel on each side of the hole in a ratio of one to 12 and lay up glass, solid glass to fill up the thickness of the laminate. I'll include a link down in the description for a PDF that describes this process. But for these tiny holes, I think this much faster method is gonna be just fine. Whenever I need to sand fiberglass, I like to use one of these attachments for my angle grinder, with some 40 grit paper. I like these flat discs with the removable paper more than the flappy discs. For one, these are way, way, way cheaper than the flappy discs. And also the flat surface here seems to make it just a little bit easier to get smooth transitions. 40 grit is pretty aggressive, so a light touch is required. I can always feather the edges a bit more tomorrow. Today, I just wanna get the holes patched before it starts raining again. A slight bit of boat yoga was required for me to be able to tape the back of the holes, but with the curvature of the hull, the cockpit locker is actually super comfortable. I'll use two layers of glass solely to make sure that we have no issues with cracks forming in the paint down the line. I mixed up a whopping 32 grams of epoxy. I split that into two and thickened one batch to fill the holes. I used the second batch to wet out the fiberglass. Unfortunately, I'm out of little brushes, but for small stuff in a pinch, this works as long as there's no health and safety guy peeking over your shoulders. I smooshed the fiberglass in place on the cockpit combing and added a layer of peel ply before then covering everything up with plastic to protect it from the rain. I think the little repair out on the cockpit combing is gonna work out great. The only slight challenge there might be is the color of the paint. The paint jump is three or four years old. So even if I have the right color of paint here inside of the boat, which I think I do, then those two colors might not be an exact match. But I think it'll be such a small difference that the two will just blend in over time. Had I not painted Athena and had it been the original gel coat on there, well then we'd have gotten into the whole custom color matching of gel coat to blend in a repair like that. And the people that can do that always seem a little bit like wizards. It's kind of magic seeing them work. But yeah, I don't think I'll have to get into that kind of trouble. Last week I cobbled together this little shelfy mounty thingy. The purpose of this is going to be to securely store our two scuba tanks in the cockpit locker. But I want this thing to be removable. The plan is to have the scuba tanks in this area here, but at some point in the future I'd like to add a ham or SSB radio to Athena and that'll require a tuner to go close to the backstays. 
and that we should be able to fit in back there. Both for when it comes time to install that tuner and also just general access, I think it's a really good idea if the scuba tank holder thingy is removable. To achieve that, while not through bolting anything through the transom, I have picked up some T-nuts. I'll embed these into some plywood on the plywood support that sits behind the shelfy thingy and then, well, then it's just gonna be a matter of bolting everything together. The supports for the shelf will be 18 millimeter plywood. I rounded over all of the corners and edges. I don't think I will need to lay up any glass for this to be strong enough, but if I do, the rounded edges are going to make my life a lot easier. I did a quick test fit to make sure the fasteners are not going to be in the way of the tanks. With the support lined up, I drilled three pilot holes through the shelf and the support to make sure all the holes would line up. After checking the outside diameter of the T-nuts, I used an 18mm drill to create holes that are a nice snug fit. After a quick test fit to make sure all the holes lined up, I repeated the process for the bottom support. Things are going to be a little tight in the cockpit locker for sure, but everything should fit. I used some blankets in an attempt to keep dust out of the rest of the boat and then quickly prepped the surface. After applying a generous blob of thickened epoxy, the support was smooshed in place. It's the next day, the thickened epoxy seems to have cured nicely. Yesterday I only adhered the top support in place. That may seem like an unnecessary detour, but I did that for a good reason. I need the five holes on the scuba shelf to line up very precisely with the five holes on the supports. If they don't, well then it won't work. I could of course have attempted to secure the backs to the scuba shelf and then brace the shelf in place, but everything is kind of weird shapes in the cockpit locker, so I'm pretty sure the shelf would just have started to shift before the epoxy had cured. I've previously used a trick where if you need to adhere something in place with thickened epoxy that doesn't want to stay in place, like maybe it's a piece of plywood that's flexing or under a bit of tension, well then you can use a dab of hot glue in combination with the thickened epoxy. The hot glue will hold the piece in place until the thickened epoxy cures. But for that to work, you don't want the hot glue to get smothered in thickened epoxy, then it, it won't work. So you have to leave a little gap around the hot glue and for the supports for the scuba shelf I wanted maximum glue surface area to make it as strong as possible. So yeah, hence the two-step process. It looks like the little repair on the cockpit combing has cured nicely. That is good news because that means we can start fairing that a little bit later today and then we can get that and the scuba shelf and the inside of the cockpit locker painted tomorrow. But first let's get that bottom support adhered in place. To not get epoxy in the threads of the T-nut, I covered the holes on the back with a tiny bit of masking tape. After having secured the bottom support to the shelf, I decided to also make some mounts for our emergency tiller. More about that a little bit later. I prepped the surface in the cockpit locker and mixed up yet more thickened epoxy. With all the supports slash mounting doohickeys smushed in place in the aft cabin, I got started on the cockpit combing repair. I did a light bit of sanding just to make sure there were no pokey bits that were proud of the surface as that would make fairing a lot more annoying. With the help of the much beloved flat headed multi tool I got the lid off of a very stubborn can of marine filler. After the first application, a light bit of oh glorious hand sanding and a second application it was time for the final bit of sanding resulting in a silky smooth surface. In between coats of marine filler, I got the scuba shelf sanded and prepped for primer. Welcome back in the cockpit locker. The red doohickey you see here next to me, that is Athena's emergency tiller, also known as the bane of my existence. Up until now, we've been keeping it in the aft cabin and it's just, it's an awkward shape and I hate moving the thing around. So I finally decided to mount it here in the cockpit locker. The emergency tiller would only ever see any use if the rack and pinion steering fails, which is very unlikely, but at least it is out of the way yet easily accessible here in the cockpit locker. Reason number 175 that I despise the emergency tiller is that it is mild steel and to attempt to keep it from rusting, I painted it with this red paint, which now just rubs off everywhere. Rather than trying to repaint my least favorite item here about Athena, which we all 
hopefully never need. I decided just to wrap it in some plastic and then we will hide it away up underneath the cockpit combing. With the help of my trusty flat-headed multi-tool, I open up a fresh set of Interprotect. I don't care too much about the finish on the back of the scuba shelf, so I used a couple of screws to raise it. That way I can coat the entire shelf in one go. I primed the inside of the cockpit locker and also the little repair area on the cockpit combing. Over the next few days, I applied another two coats of primer and then three coats of paint. And now we have a beautiful white scuba shelf and also the inside of the cockpit locker and the little repair area is looking very, very white. As you can see, I've already installed the little block for the stay sail and the repair turned out fairly well. Things are a little bit cramped in the cockpit locker. I've already shoved the emergency tiller in there. I think for this puzzle to all be solved as easily as possible, the next step is going to be the drive unit for the autopilot. This is Garmin's Class B compact drive unit. From everybody that I've talked to, these units do have a good reputation for not breaking down. So I don't know what happened to the first one we had, but Garmin support was really good and they got this replacement to us really quick. Now, unfortunately, they are out of stock at the moment, so we can't order a spare unit to have on the boat. But as soon as they're back in stock, which should be sometime middle of September, well then we'll order one just to be on the safe side. With all the sanding and painting in here, I have made a little bit of a mess. So. Let's get the mount for the drive unit just cleaned up first. And then just a little dab of some marine grease. And then there's only this one plug we need to connect to the brain box. And it is literally that easy to swap out the drive units. That's one of the things I really like about the Class B compact model. I have modified the installation of the autopilot a tiny bit, so we'll have to run the installation setup again. There are two versions. There's one you can run dockside, and then there's one where you have to be out in the water. So for today, let's just run the dockside one. All right, here it is, dockside wizard. The first thing it wants us to do is to turn the rudder to a position where the vessel will turn fully to starboard. Then we'll say OK to that. And for the next one, we need to turn it fully to port. And we'll OK that again. Next up is to center the rudder. I think this is the final bit of calibration. After having completed the wizard, we should now have autopilot. And it appears we do. OK, let's uh, get the scuba shelf in place. Now, I do think something might have been wrong with our first drive unit, because the new one is much more quiet than the old one has ever been. <laughs> okay, well, I think this was from Harbor Freight, so, uh, so yeah, that's uh, the end of that. These are all nice and snug now. The tanks feel very secure here. I don't think they're going to go anywhere. Now, let's just trim the length of this a little bit to make it uh, a little bit more manageable. Before we put the cover on the drive unit, it's going to attach this little clip to keep the actuator in place. Now, this is designed so that it can be removed without the use of tools, which is something I also did for the cover. The cover does have to go in in a very specific way. First, we go to starboard, and then we go to port. But once it's in, it just clips into place. And then I've got this little doohickey here that goes in this threaded hole to lock it in place. And there we go, a nice and secured cover. I've shoved a couple of fenders in here. We have six of these aboard. We have room for four up by the granny bars, so it'll be nice to have those in here so they're out of the way. Of course, we have the emergency tiller back here and the two dive cylinders. But 
I think we have room here for a bunch of lines that it would be nice to have easily accessible out in the cockpit. Sadly, we don't have unlimited room out in the cockpit logger, so we will have to be a little bit selective. But I think stuff like our preventer, our control lines for the booms to keep them from going too far aft or too far forward, and also our anchor bridle and our mooring lines, which of course are in use right now, those are all lines that would be super convenient to have easily accessible out there. To hopefully be able to do that in a somewhat neat fashion, I've picked up some of these line tamers. These were just the ones I could get. There are tons of different designs out there that serve the same purpose. I don't know if these are better or worse than the other stuff that's out there. They get secured with a single screw and then there's this little doohickey down here that also gets a hole just to locate the thing. And then there's this guy which goes in through the line you want to secure up around here and then the line just hangs there. With the line tamers installed it looks a little bit something like this. As you can see we've got two available over here for our mooring lines and uh, I think this is going to work out fairly well. That is going to be it for the cockpit locker for now. We still have a tiny bit of room to play with in the cockpit locker. I just want to make absolutely sure whatever we shove in there is what we actually want to store in there. So for now, let's just leave it. But uh, yesterday I picked up our new sheets. It's just a spare set to have aboard. They're nothing fancy. They're just Marlow braid 16 millimeters because that is what the self tailor on our winches requires, sadly, because that thickness also meant this was kind of expensive. I think this was around 320 US dollars equivalent. With the block installed on the cockpit combing, we can also go ahead and close the track for a stay sail task. Ava thought it was best we hold off on doing the paper towel holder and the shower foot thingy tasks until she got here, so I can't do anything about those. All the stove tasks I've got planned for next week, ideally before Thursday when Ava gets back. And uh, well, that only leaves one task in the to-do column that we can do, and that is companionway hatch cover. It is by no stretch of the imagination a fun or fancy task. It is just a matter of securing this hatch cover that sits here above the companionway hatch. The hatch cover is very well protected by the fiberglass dodger, so I'm not going to bother with any kind of sealant for now, because we may want to install some electronic doohickeys up there. I just want to make sure it doesn't slide around on us. Wham bam! That was quick and easy. Now there are only these stove tasks left. I still have another few hours until I need to start editing and rendering this video, so maybe there's like a little task we could squeeze in, something that would uh, really bump up the spiffiness factor here inside of the boat and make the interior look a lot more finished. I am of course talking about the aft cabin. There's a bunch of exposed fiberglass in here. If I could get that covered up, that would be really awesome. I wouldn't try and squeeze in that task if it wasn't for the fact that I've ended up with a little bit of plywood that I thought I was going to use in the cockpit locker. I didn't and I don't really want to sail around with it and it would be perfect for covering up that fiberglass. Ta-da! Captain Dumkopf strikes yet again. I don't know if you caught it in the time lapse, but I applied thickened epoxy the first time to the wrong side of the plywood. So this is yeah very sticky now. So I'll leave that in place until tomorrow and then uh, tomorrow I can deal with the uh, other side. I'll leave that as a little bit of a cliffhanger for next week. Next week is going to be, like I said, all the stove stuff and also we have a little joker task. We need to install a toilet paper holder, but that's not going to be as straightforward as it might sound. So uh, with that intriguing conundrum dangled, I hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you!